Hello, YouTube viewers. I am Dr. Tahir. Welcome back to Youthful Medicine. Today, I will be discussing with you a topic that I get consulted uh, a lot uh, about for treatment of uh, obesity in the setting of polycystic ovarian syndrome. I have a couple of other videos on this topic, but I would like to discuss with you a uh, a, a case that represents millions and millions of patients and um, if I uh, mention that I see about a case, one or two uh, consults of this topic it would be really um, true to my total number of population of patients that I'm seeing for this disease polycystic ovarian syndrome is the number one of the highest presenting problem in young females with obesity so I'm going to discuss with you a case uh, of a 25-year-old female who's been struggling with obesity uh, since her uh, early teens. And she developed signs and symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome um, at around age 15. Patients started having irregular menses. Uh, she developed uh, some hirsutism and also... Um, irregular menses with some weight gain that led doctors to kind of evaluate the cause and uh, um, the levels of her blood test clearly confirmed that she has polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm not going to go into the details of how the diagnosis is made, but basically irregular menses, high DHEA level, which is a hormone, uh, levels of your testosterone, and um, hirsutism or excessive hair growth abnormal for for your age and sex and ethnicity is uh, what we call symptoms of uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, she uh, started gaining weight her menses become irregular and over the next 10 years she became obese uh, her current bmi is 32 uh, based on her body frame size and uh, she's been struggling to lose weight but has not been able to lose weight uh, she has gone through different treatments, including IUD, hormonal IUD, uh, which uh, caused uh, you know complete cessation of her um, menses. Uh, she has been switched around from one oral contraceptive to the other. Uh, she has even tried uh, metformin and spironolactone uh, for balancing of hormones and not been very successful. So she came to me with real frustration that she's not been able to lose weight at her young age. She feels tired, fatigued, and um, and the weight has caused her to have a lot of mental distress now. So we're gonna try to discuss this, that how uh, in this 25 year old female, treating obesity first uh, and reversing the metabolic problems seen with obesity and PCOS combo can help improve life significantly. So in managing patients with obesity and polycystic ovarian syndrome, the focus should be on addressing both on the obesity and the metabolic syndrome that comes with it and which includes insulin resistance. So the suggested course for these patients that I start is number one, lifestyle modification, making sure that encouraging a balanced diet rich in whole foods with a focus on low glycemic index foods, including reducing high glycemic or high carb foods, which are um, uh, reason for high blood glucose levels. Uh, so uh, talking to patients about details about the high glycemic food is something I do. I also sometimes refer them to a nutritionist and ask them to take a personalized uh, food journal to make sure that they can tell me what they've been eating. Number two is physical activity. Uh, my patient, I talk to her, she tries to remain active, but with her work and uh, uh, work and family responsibilities, it's been harder for her to go to gym. So I try to aim at a, at least 30 minutes, uh, five times a day physical activity, moderate intensity activity, which can help reduce the insulin um, resistance and increase the sensitivity of insulin. It's important and it will help with metabolic uh, resistance that she's seeing. Uh, in pharmacologic options, I will discuss with you, but in this case, uh, as she has already failed metformin, uh, I am going to discuss and add uh, you know, uh, GLP medications. We discussed about Vigovi and Zepbound and we're gonna decide based on 
uh, further testing what is uh, the right drug for you. So let me go into why, what is the polycystic ovarian syndrome? Com uh, is It's a complex endocrine uh, disease uh, of your hormonal system and is associated with insulin resistance and weight fluctuations. This patient had fluctuated weight. Some years she'll get 30 pounds, then she'll leave 20 pounds. Some years she'll gain up to even 50 pounds. So why insulin resistance happens in PCOS? Well, there is what we call the post-receptor insulin signaling defects. So the receptors on the cells which absorb the insulin to get into the cells are not working. There is some defect in it. So in the PCOS, there, this insulin when it is available in the body when you consume food like carbs and everything um, that triggers insulin release. Uh, the, the glucose uptake releases the insulin, but the insulin cannot get into the cells, especially in their uh, muscles and adipose tissue. So this leads to high circulating insulin levels. One of the tests that I do for these patients is I check for their insulin levels. Number two problem, the second problem in this patient population is excess androgens. So women in PCOS have more male hormones. They have more elevated levels of androgens. Androgens like testosterone is one of the examples of it, uh, dihydrotestosterone hormones, which can interfere with the normal action of insulin in this patient and further contributing to their insulin resistance. Number three problem is uh, the third issue is the adipose tissue dysfunction. The fat cells in the PCOS cells may release an abnormal pattern of adipokines. Adipokines are the, the chemicals, the hormones produced by the fat tissue and they can aggravate the insulin resistance too. This includes the increased levels of the inflammatory cytokines that decreases the level of adiponectin, which normally enhances insulin sensitivity. So we have a lot of things going on. That's why in a lot of my PCOS patients, I see that they have issues with their, um, with their inflammation marker. Their C-reactive protein is also high. And the genetic factor, there's an evidence that suggests that there's a predisposition or genetic predisposition to insulin resistance in PCOS patients, although we are still working on further details about how the genetic situation works. So because of this insulin resistance and high insulin levels in the blood, a patient actually gains more weight because the high insulin levels promote fat storage. Insulin is an anabolic hormone. It encourages the storage of glucose as a fat. So the glucose in the body, that is there, the it, insulin, high levels of insulin in the blood lead to increased fat, uh, especially around your belly, in the waist area. And the hormonal balance uh, also happened because of uh, the imbalances of um, the sexual hormones. The sex hormones like increased androgens and decreased progesterone and estrogen in the female who is have PCOS affect their metabolism and affect their appetite regulation can, which can lead to weight gain. There's also another important topic uh, which I'll touch briefly here is called leptin resistance. So women with PCOS may experience what we call leptin resistance, which impairs their normal feedback mechanism that regulates our hunger and energy expenditure, leading to increased appetite and decreased hunger. So these patients end up having more food that they need and they are unable to regulate their appetite. So, uh, and also their energy expenditure process is all impaired. So they don't burn as much calories as they would ordinarily if they did not have the leptin resistance. So the patients also have a lower basal metabolic rate. So basal metabolic rate is like um, you burn calories if even if you're not uh, moving. So are you a hummer or are you a Prius? If you are a Hummer, even if you're not moving and you just have your engine uh, just turned on idling and it will burn more fuel, your body is not burning fuel if you have PCOS, you have lower basal metabolic rate. So uh, these are a few topics that I think um, 
reasons that I wanted to bring up to your attention uh, regarding PCOS and weight gain. Um, I'll keep you guys updated about how I treat these patients, but uh, on my follow-up visit, I'm gonna have a discussion about the GLP uh, medications uh, and we'll choose either Vigovi or Zepbound uh, for this patient. If you found uh, this channel useful, please like it, subscribe it, share it with someone, and I will continue to produce useful information for you regarding autoimmunity, inflammation, and obesity. Until next time, take care.